Welcome back to this new episode of The Mushroom. Uh, I'm here in The Mushroom with Monica, back again from, if you remember her from the second episode, talking about her breakup. Well, now she's back. I'm back. And now she's a bad bitch. Kind of, trying to be. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing my best. And once again, this is a remote recording of the podcast. Monica's in her own bedroom. I'm in my bedroom. We're doing this online. If the audio quality sucks, I apologize. But, you know, this is what you gotta do in the second wave of the coronavirus. Yep. We all we are going through technical difficulties. Yeah, like, we've all the teachers who can't do deal with technology. Yeah. All the, like, older generation who has to learn this stuff. Even us, we we don't know, and we've had to learn it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm realizing now how much I don't understand my computer. But hopefully we figure out all the technical difficulties and um, we can start. So I wanted Monica back this week because Andrea and I had an episode where we talked about our friendship and like I've been friends with Andrea um not best friends for 20 years but that's that's a small detail um we leave that out because it just sounds better to say we've been friends for 20 years <laughs> True. but we have been friends for 20 years or 19 I guess but Monica is my best friend as well part of the trio you shot up pretty quickly in like my friends list I guess you could say and I think it would be a good uh, episode to sort of talk about your experience in finding friends that you get along with that like people who actually sort of are on the same wavelength as you yeah because you've kind of struggled what I yeah (laughs) from what you've told us like you struggled in grade nine and stuff with friendships and I know obviously a lot of people have and maybe even now in their early 20s they don't even have a solid friend group a lot I know a lot of people who don't I know people like who like I've like and I see their friend groups and then I compare it to like ours and I'm just like that would not work for me yeah like I prefer the way I have it because that's like the best way it works for me and like I'm recently I think I've like really cherish the friendship that we have because i've realized how special it is because like i've seen other people like not have that at all and i'm like wow honestly me too i'm lucky like i felt like i've always cherished it but i think until um you're put in like yeah until you're put in like really i guess until you're in your lowest lows you don't realize how good you have it yeah, and then you, like, cherish it on a whole new level, and you're like, damn. Yeah, because that's when you really need the people around support, you yeah. to support you. And then when they really do step it up, and they really, like, show you how much they can be there for you, then it's like, whoa. I, like, I you, you know, <laughs> you guys were fun to hang out with, but now it's just like, I know that you can really support me when I'm at my lowest. Yeah, like, you guys are, like, real friends. Like, this yeah. is the friendships that, like people say you should have yeah and you're like damn but not to say that you know friendships don't come with their own uh difficulties difficulties and we'll get into that later and arguing yeah and arguing that's a natural part of any relationship where two people care about each other you're gonna have times where you get into arguments definitely because you're not the same person no You're two different people. And sometimes, honestly, even being very similar to each other is what causes the disagreement. Sometimes, yes. (laughs) So let's get into, I guess, um, grade nine. You come into high school. Yes. From your elementary school. And you're thrown into this giant school. And you know, like, maybe a fifth of the people there from your elementary school, but then there's, like, 80% new people that you need to meet. Yeah, because, like, all the elementary schools in the area just are, like, thrown into one. 
Yeah. And you're like, what people? And How... as an introvert. Oh yeah, same. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But what helped, I guess, was Facebook. And you kind of like just add a friend, add anybody that you met that day. Oh yeah. And then you're just like, wow, look at all these friends I have. But really it's just someone that you said hi to. Yeah, or you randomly like sat beside them because you didn't know anybody in that class. Or they randomly sat beside you. Yeah. So how did you find that year? Uh, Rough. (laughs) (laughs) It basically like you're thrown into like this situation where there's so many new people. So like you try to cling on to like the people that you know so people from elementary school and you kind of try to like stick with those friendships and like stick with those people because that's what I feel comfortable with yeah but that's then what I did uh, yeah but then as like the weeks go on and like those the people in your elementary school start like talking to like other people but then also some of the friendships in that group got tighter. Mm -hmm. And then kind of what I basically noticed happening was that I was getting pushed out. People who, like, I thought were, like, my friends and, like, people who I thought were going to be my best friends for till I die turned out that they didn't actually care that much about me, which is shitty. And, like... I could tell that they didn't want to necessarily be friends with me because they didn't think I was, like, I don't know, cool enough or, like, they thought, like, I was annoying and stuff. And, like, I remember talking to my best friend because one day when we were all walking home together because we all live in the same area because we all went to elementary school. Like, and then I, like, saw that, like, people were isolating me. Like, if I wanted to walk next to them, they'd either, like, walk faster to get ahead of me or they'd walk slower so that uh, I could like I'd have to like slow down to stay with them so I kind of felt that like they didn't want to walk with me you know what I mean yeah that's so shitty it is yeah it was you know you know that like (laughs) teens do this type of shit like like you know and it you didn't think that happened to you no exactly (laughs) and it did which so like at that point like I started like realizing like yo these people don't want to hang out with me and then so I was like okay I guess I'll just walk by myself and I did that Loki crying but like it's because it hurt but you have to like sort of preserve whatever dignity you have yeah exactly well I'm not I'm gonna stop following you then and I'm just yeah so I'm gonna keep walking yeah that's basically what I was doing at that point. And then I heard one of these girls say, and like, it's like this moment is like ingrained in my head forever. And she basically says, why? She's so annoying. And I'm just like, rip. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, um, and then when I got home, I texted the person who, like, I, w- I thought I was closest to and I thought she was, like, my best friend because we we always, like, hung out with each other for, ma- well, maybe not, ma- but, like, the last, like, few years of elementary school. And I thought she was my best friend. And I texted her and I'm like, huh, did this person say this about me? And then she goes, oh, yeah, you heard that she did but she was she's right and i'm like what i'm like what what i'm like what do you mean and then she's just like yeah no you follow me everywhere like you don't really talk much at lunch i'm like i'm sorry i have nothing to say sometimes some things aren't interesting and i just don't want to freaking join a dumb conversation or whatever and i'm sure you weren't following her you were just like I thought we were friends, Friends. so I was going with you. (laughs) Exactly, I thought we were friends. And I'm like, fine, then I won't freaking walk with you then. Because at the time, we were walking to school together with, it was me and another girl. 
And I was like, fine, then I won't come to your house then before we go for when we walk to school. I'll just meet up with the other people. And then I started doing that, but I could like tell it was just like awkward and as heck. So I'm like, mom, drive me. And then at one point I did try to maybe like walk with other people, maybe make close relationships with other people in that like elementary school group. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't working because I could tell they didn't want to be friends with me either because we were never close in the first place. And I'm like, well, this sucks. And like, I remember after that kind of happening, there was like a weekend, like me and my mom, and my dad, we all went to, like, my cottage. And I remember I just, like, cried that whole weekend. Because I just, I'm like, I have no friends. Like, what the heck am I going to do? I'm, like, I'm going to be alone for the rest of high school. Like, I don't know anybody. Like, how do I make friends? I haven't done that in so long. So, like. And that's the kind of place that your mind goes to at any sort of low point. Is like, this is going to be my life forever. Exactly. Forever alone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it, yeah, and but then it's hard not to think that way. It's yeah, because like at the at the time you're like, um, like I haven't done like I haven't made friends in like such a long time because mm-hmm. all throughout elementary school you weren't really making new friends. Yeah, you just kind of knew the same people over and over again. Yeah, yeah, like I stuck to the same like person for the last like few years, mm-hmm. actually. I'd say for half of half of my elementary school experience, I stuck to that one person. And then all of a sudden you're like, I gotta make a new friend? Like the hell? Yeah, it, it's literally like dating. Like being in yeah. a, a relationship for a long time and then suddenly the relationship's over and you're like, I have to date again. <gasps> I have how to do get you know to, to do it. Person, I have to open up all over again. Yep. Yep. But it can be fun. Once you start doing it, it's just terrifying. Yes, it can be. It, it's terrifying, but it can be really fun as well. So what happened after that? Once you decided that you're going to stop trying and yeah. with those I, people? I, it was like one day. There was another girl. And this is still grade nine? This is still grade nine. There's another girl who, like, was sitting next to our group, but she was kind of alone as well. And we just started talking. So, because we were both, like, alone, we kind of started talking. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, you're alone, I'm alone. Let's not be alone. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, we kind of started talking, and then we started hanging out. And then there was, like, someone else that she knew who she was, like, close to. And then we kind of started hanging out. And then it, and there was, like, one more other person who kind of joined the group. I don't remember how she did. But it, it became, like, a small group of four. We kind of, we just, we'd have lunch. It was, it was, like, school friends. Like, I never really hung yeah. out with them outside of school. It was just kind of, like, people I sat and ate lunch with, basically. And then in, like, all my classes, I had, like, one or two people that, like, I end up talking to. And just, like, and so out with them. How, how long did you go being, like, alone before you started talking to other people? Was it just, like, a few days? I feel a like day? it was a solid, like, week. Okay. Of, like, all this shit going down. But it was, it felt like months. Mm-hmm. Usually when something like that crumbles, it's a it lot, but at, all at once. It's hard, like, that, like, one week was, like, me just being, like, isolated and then, like, leaving the calf early and just walking around for majority of lunch mm-hmm. by myself, which, like, so, like, that kind of sucked. Not kind of. It did. <laughs> I'm dabbling it. It sucked really bad. But, um, yeah, the week felt like a month. And I'm like, this is my life now. I'm that kid. (laughs) It sucks. It sucks because, I don't know. You always, like, see that kid portrayed in movies and stuff. Yeah. And then you are that kid. And, like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, I've never had anything that big happen. But I've definitely been that kid. You know? Yeah, like, moments of it. Yeah. 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 Not like I didn't have like a giant like friend group shun me, 
but I've had a best friend that I thought, you know, kind of like you, like I thought that we were yeah. best friends forever. Like we were friends for like basically our whole lives almost. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I just felt like she thought I wasn't cool anymore or something. Like she just found like cooler friends and we just like stopped having stuff to talk about anymore. And then my whole life just kind of like, I was like, I, you know, like you're so close to this one person. Mm -hmm. And then the friends that you're left with after they leave are like, I like, I barely know you. And like, we don't have that connection anymore. Yeah. Like, no, I don't have that connection with these random people. So it's just like, it's not the same. And you feel so empty. Yeah. Cause like, you build such like a strong deep connection to your knowledge with someone and it's kind of like you mostly care about like the opinions of the person you care about the most yeah i I don't know if everyone feels this way but i know for me if i have some like random person like say something to me i'm like i don't care brush it off but if i have someone who's like close to me say something Mm -hmm. it it like tears you apart and that's kind of like what I felt like I had that other girl say that I was annoying and I was like kind of like yeah that sucks okay but then the moment she said it it hurt like on a whole new level definitely so yeah so you're having your best friend do that to you basically think you're not cool enough that hurt you so much deeper than like if some other person did it I mean it was never like said blatantly like that you know like I never had that moment that you had yes but but I just felt felt it and it was so implied with everything like they were like going to parties getting drunk and I was like writing one direction fan fiction in my free time you know what I mean yeah so it's kind of like yeah obviously we've grown apart and you you're like cooler than me and I'm like a little nerd by myself yeah but like that's like so stereotypical because I think the cool people would be the people writing fan fictions which <laughs> see how sure everyone has their own definition of cool and that's a whole nother conversation I guess some it's just like <laughs> different interests or something but it's just you feel because I still felt like even though she was like going and doing all this stuff besides hanging out with me I still felt like we could have still been friends But it's the fact that she decided I don't want to pursue this friendship anymore. And maybe, (laughs) honestly, it kind of, I don't know, like, I don't know what's, I don't know if I would have preferred her to have said something, you know, because it did kind of just fizzle out and I had to take the hint. Mm -hmm. And maybe I would have wished that it had been a blow up fight. To kind of solidify, like, okay, this is over. Instead of me, Mm -hmm. like, trying and trying and and her just, like, flaking and flaking. And then finally Mm -hmm. me having to stop trying. Maybe. I feel like it was sucked either way. (laughs) It would have sucked either way. Yeah. (laughs) Because either way, you're you're getting rejected by someone that you cared about. So then tell me about about your grade 10 experience. How, How did that go? It's like... I can't tell you the moment this, like, kind of transitioned, but grade 10, I, like, completely, like, swapped friend groups. <laughs> the people in grade 9, I kind of, st- I stopped talking to because that group, like, fell apart. Oh, on the- on its own? Yeah, because one girl did similar what your friend did to the other girl in that friend oh. group. Oh. Okay. Yes. And yes. then that kind of fell apart. And then I end up, like, I think someone I was in possibly, like, my math class, maybe, that I was in with. I feel like that's how I met her. And then I knew other people in that friend group from different classes. And then I realized they all hang out together. And I just end up sitting with them one day at lunch. And then we became a group for grade 10. You kind of collected them from each class. I yeah, but they were already together. I just kind of went realize, oh my god, you guys sit together. I'll sit with you guys. I'm friends with all y'all separately. Well, not then friends. That's great. You friends. You probably fit in like really naturally since you knew all them already. Yeah, 
And, like, these were also people who were, like, school friends. Like, we didn't hang out outside of school. Mm-hmm. Like, we we sit and have lunch together. So it wasn't, like, my, like, true friends yet. And then that was the group that sat beside your group. Mm-hmm. Throwback to the other podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, if you <laughs> we listen to it. it rich. <laughs> crossover. Literally crossover because our lives crossed over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at this point. So then that's how, like, so our groups were next to each other. And then I knew a girl in your friend group from a math class. And I was. Yeah, our, our friend class. group sat next to each other in the cafeteria, but we all kind of knew of each yeah. other. So we kind of started talking. And then it merged into, like, a large group. Yes. And then grade 11 happened. Grade 10 was also when we all met Cheyenne. He transferred to our oh, school. Oh, right. He was in that group I don't really well. know Cheyenne much. Yeah. He was on my side of the large group. Because I met him in yeah. grade 10 business. Yeah. He came to my I didn't really know him 16, for... sweet 16 birthday. Oh, I remember 10. you guys talking about the sweet your sweet 16. Yeah, uh-huh. we kind of... Me and you didn't have a good start. Well, if we will get into <laughs> Will we? <laughs> well, yeah, like, if we talk about it, because there's, 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 like, a significant event that happened before that. Oh, okay. made our group even more. Because okay. at What's the beginning the of grade 11, one of the girls from that, like, my, like, little group of group, my grade 10 group, she moved schools. Oh, it's yeah. Even know me. <laughs> She didn't tell you. Yeah, I was like, where's where where is this girl? And they're like, yo, she moved schools. She had like a whole thing with us outside of school. I'm like, she did not. But I was like, oh I'm like I knew we were at close, but that kind of hurt. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't sit with you for like a year, but okay. And I was like, oh. And then there was like so there's originally four and then three, and then one of those girls pulled the you're not cool enough and I can go sit with other people. Uh-huh. And then, so there's two of us left. And I knew a girl in your group fairly well at this point. Because we had a bunch of classes. So then we kind of, like, end up squishing into your group. And that's how I met you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My first impression of you was not the best. No, and even looking back, I'm like, I can't believe I said that shit. Why? Like, what was I thinking? so basically listeners this is what happened in grade 11 i entered that year thinking i'm hot shit because i have a quote-unquote boyfriend i'm just relating so hard just uh. (laughs) this relationship it's hard to call it a relationship because i was with the guy for less than a month yeah so like i it's it's, technically we we had the title but like it wasn't a real relationship so it was a high school relationship yeah but like beginning high school relationship so like we were talking about relationships i think and i think i said something like oh yeah like me and my boyfriend we like talk every day and like blah blah and then (laughs) this girl (laughs) turns to me uh. <laughs> I laugh at it now, but at the time I was like, "What?" She turns to me, and goes, "You have a boyfriend?" Like she was surprised at the fact that I can pull a man's, and I got so offended. No, I'm you like, know what I said. Yeah. I remember what I said, and it was worse than that. It was worse than that. I it thought was that worse was than that. Did you actually say? I said, "Wow, Monica has a boyfriend, and I don't." Oh. That's what I said. Oh yeah, it was worse. That is worse. Yeah. I, I I censored it in my head. <laughs> I made you nice <laughs> in my head. And I did like I didn't mean it with bad intentions. Like I truly like I it came out of my mouth and then I saw you were offended and I was like, no no no, was, like I don't mean it that way. I just like truly <laughs> I it's because I saw you as so innocent and like so just like just like a little like pure girl and then if you had known me in like grade eight I was count kind of like uh how do I say 
Um, How do you say? <laughs> um, adventurous. Ad- adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then I had been single for many years at that point, like two years, and with no action. And if you had known what was going on with me personally, which you didn't, no. But I had that whole situation with like. I'll cut this out. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. Uh, and I've said this to you many times over the years because we've went over this. I know. But I really, truly did not have bad intentions. It just came out of my mouth. And then, and this happens a lot with me. <laughs> I say shit and then I realize how it sounds. And I'm like, oh no, I didn't. That's not how it was in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So like basically <laughs> you said it like the way you said it. And I, I was like, from the way I took it in the moment, I went, this girl literally thinks so little of me. Like, she has this opinion about me, and she doesn't even know me. I was like, this girl, she's a bitch. <laughs> yep. And I don't blame you. Because I would have also been pissed at myself. At me. But it just shows sometimes first impressions aren't really, don't re- last. Like, they don't last. They change. I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta give enough time for change. The yeah. opportunity to show the change. Yeah. Uh, I still cringe. I don't think you're a bitch anymore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's no longer. She's a great person, guys. I love her. And it and it was a snap judgment of you because I didn't know you that well. So I don't know why I just expected and I assumed that you were like this innocent little little girl. Yeah. But yeah, enough of me explaining myself. Um, <laughs> go on with the story. Okay. Oh, that was my first impression of you. Um, what happened after that? How did you like, meet Andrea? Oh, oh, we have to go back. How I first... Okay, a quick flashback. Flashback to grade nine. She was in a lot of my class. Like, no, not a lot. I think she was in my English and my gym class. But she was, I think, English was first semester, gym was second. I think that's how it went. So we saw each other for the whole year. So, like, I knew of her. Mm Because she was always the loud person in the front of English class. With, like, this other group. (laughs) And they were always full of Yeah, she was very talkative. Yeah. And, like, I remember Ms. Cornwall was getting mad at her. (laughs) For talking too much. (laughs) Because, like, I was in, like, the back corner. And then in grade nine is when, like, I guess we had more interaction because it was gym class. And, like, in sports, sometimes you get, like, like, more, like, contact, I guess. Mm -hmm. Then we'd always get very competitive, especially with each other. (laughs) Because we're, I'm competitive. She can be competitive as well. She can, yes. In gym class. So, like, we'd always, like, I remember basketball, we'd, like, fight over the ball all the time. And I remember her best friend at the time tackled me in volleyball. And she was on my team. (laughs) I'm I'm still scarred. I literally see see the image of her coming at me like this. Like, (laughs) arms spread out, coming to jump me. And I'm like, I just want to volley this ball. (laughs) I'm like, why? Terrifying. It was. This is why I, I... I didn't participate because if I put in effort, people would tackle me. <laughs> I think I was too I competitive. I was too competitive. I'm like I have to give my team has to win, even though I'm not. That this doesn't mean that I was I was good at sports. <laughs> I just put my all into it, so it ended up with me basically falling on my ass for most of the time. So that's how. Like I, I mean, mean, I would avoid being competitive, and I would get instead of getting tackled, I'd get hit in the face with a ball. <laughs> Literally, like, many times. In that one semester of gym class, I got hit in the face, like, at least three times with three different balls. The basketball hurts the most. Yeah, I'm like, was it a basketball? Because I think yes. that one hurts the most. Yes, it was a basketball, right. it was a volleyball, and I think a soccer ball. Or one of those, like, foam balls. I don't remember. Oh my but yeah, God. basketball hurts the most. <laughs> And it wasn't, like, purposeful. Like, obviously, that would be kind of scary if people were throwing balls at me on purpose. It was just that I'm very bad at sports. And I was always, (laughs) unluckily, where the ball was heading. (laughs) 
No, see, I don't think I've ever got hit in the face, but I always, like, ate shit. Like, I always got <laughs> I had so many bruises. Because you and were sometimes going that hard. I was going you're hard. Like, you're like, YOLO, dive. <laughs> Easy, right. <laughs> Literally. I'm still like that to this day. Like, I play, like, sometimes volleyball in the backyard with my, like, dad and stuff. And, like, I'm I'm covered in dirt by the time we're done. I can't imagine. I would never dive to the floor for anything. Maybe if, like, my future child falls. <laughs> then I'll dive for them. <laughs> Even then, it's a little bit, do I want to? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm probably gonna break a wrist. Uh, do I want to? <laughs> I hold the baby but my wrist is broken. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh my god but yeah so like I kind of knew her in like that gym setting and that's how like we like had more interaction so we always kind of like knew of each other and I'm like oh yeah it's Andrea and she'd be like oh it's Monica so when our like groups merged she was one of, of those so, people like, that you knew she's one of those people that I like I started talking to first initially mm-hmm I started talking to her more like than I started talking to you because I thought you didn't like me <laughs> for obvious reasons. How did we do you like remember I, how we got past it? I don't know. Was it just like I f- I think it was just time. I think I I think I apologized obviously initially because I saw that you were offended. Yeah. And then I think over time it just it literally just took time, I think, yeah. for you to, like, actually regain some sort of I think good impression of me. Andrea probably helped in the process. Probably. Because cause I was talking to her a lot, and, like, you obviously talked to her a lot, because you guys went through how, like, y'all were getting close at that point. Or yeah. were already close. Or, were you guys officially um, best friends at that point? I think we were officially best friends, like, like beginning of grade 11. Okay, so you guys were, like, officially best friends at that point. Yeah, like, we had said the word to each other after, like, a year of actually being best friends. We finally admitted that we you were best gave friends. yourself the title. It was a title. <laughs> um, so I feel like because of her, it kind of facilitated a conversation between the three of us sometimes when we were, like, all sitting there. Because, like, sometimes it would be, like, me sitting next to you and then Andrea across from us. Or I sitting next to Andrea and you across from us. Yeah, I, for some reason, I always remember sitting across from Andrea. Yes. Me and Andrea were always opposite. Yeah, and then I was next to you despite me not thinking. Maybe because you didn't want to look at me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It helped, like, not looking at me. Yeah, so it kind of, like, facilitated our conversations, I guess. And then we started talking more. And I'm like, actually, she's she's kind of nice. And then she's like, oh, she is nice. You know, you know what? You know what did it? Culture Fest, grade 11. <gasps> oh, my God. How did I forget? I, I think forgot, that- too. I feel like the start of the facilitating and then Culture Fest, like, just went boom. Yeah. Okay, this girl's so, cool. Our high school has this thing every... I don't know if they still do it, but when we were there, every two years they have yeah. this um, event called Culture Fest where you kind of... You join a pavilion and... It's like a booth. It's just like a booth. Because I didn't know what a pavilion was when I started. I'm like, it's a booth. <laughs> basically yeah it's a booth yeah. and there are like multiple different cultures because you're like celebrating diversity and stuff and me and monica are both polish like yeah. our parents were born in poland we were born here but our parents well, immigrated yeah. we were born and raised there mm-hmm. and so we joined the polish uh pavilion and this is also second semester of grade 11, and I think Andrea was away because she was doing co-op right. at an elementary school. She had a co-op position, so she was gone a lot of the time. So me and Monica were, like, honestly, Andrea was my best and 
almost only friend at that point because like my other friendships were kind of leaving true because they were changing interests yeah and I kind of then to happen too and then I realized like as people were kind of dissolving from that large group me and Monica had a lot more in common mm-hmm. and I was like this girl's like really smart she's really cool like we have good conversations and it seems like we have a lot in common and then we also like both joined the Polish pavilion for culture fest yeah and that was a big bonding experience too because you know you're like working on this booth you're like talking about what kind of food each person's going to bring and you bond over being annoyed by the other people in the pavilion (laughs) oh my god yes (laughs) They're annoying the crap out of us. Yeah, and then turns yeah. out like Monica was one of the one of the few people in the pavilion that I actually got along with. And then on the day of Culture Fest, like it was her and I holding up those platters, serving people in our Polish shirts, and we were having a blast. And there's a picture of us. And we're, like, smiling ear to ear because our parents came and took a picture of us. Oh, yeah, because our parents were just like, we have to see this. Yeah. Um, and, but then also yeah. what ended up happening during that culture fest, which I feel like was very be- be- beneficial to our friendship, is that we all had, like, everyone in the pavilion who were like who worked on it had, like, shifts. But then when we went for our shift, we stayed for the whole thing, basically. Yeah. Because like, no one showed up for their shifts. Yep. And then we just took everyone's shift and we were there for the longest time. And, and I- that just like showed that like me and Monica I think we have very similar values. And I think that just showed like her loyalty in general as a person. And I was like, okay, this this bitch is a ride or die. Oh, and I, want, I, am. I want her on my team. Hell yeah. <laughs> I am a ride or die. <laughs> yeah. And I, I- I've learned that I'm like I am I can be loyal to a fault sometimes to a fault sometimes but I feel like it's still a good quality to have but you also obviously know like when to cut someone off when they've hurt you yes but that's more from like spite but (laughs) (laughs) we're like fine leave then (laughs) but I think as long as we keep like we keep it 100 with each other oh yeah and we always like are honest that you know i want this friendship to continue we have to come to a resolution we will always find a way yes as because that's the thing is even like the same thing as a relationship it like it succeeds because both people want it to the thing is like a friendship is also a type of relationship exactly exactly so they have a lot of similarities between like a romantic relationship and like a friendship mm-hmm. we know the obvious differences <laughs> between the two but like in terms of communication and like staying honest with each other i feel like you have to do like like the same amount in both definitely for it to be like, truly successful and like there's always going to be times where like you will have to like compromise and like work together to find like a solution that works for both of you because two people aren't the same so they're always gonna have like different needs and different like ways of communicating where you're like oh I thought you meant this but no I actually meant this so then you have to be like okay well we have to get on the same page true and like I know sometimes like I've learned this more so recently that I'm not the best communicator especially when I'm like heated (laughs) terrible and like that's something that like i'm working on and i do it in all my like relationships that i have with people i'm just not good at communicating. but i think you're definitely getting better but yeah i've come along with <laughs> we went to we had a mall outing me and you right we did we went to the mall and this was like end of grade 11 like june I think it was you day. remember that detail. I, I remember yeah. it during there. It was definitely after a culture fest. And then we like walked around and we got some food and we started talking about deep shit. And 
Oh, right. I was just t- talking to you about, like, sh- stuff going on in my life. My my teeth. Yeah. And then, yeah, we just got deep. And then, we were I were think... Some Tim Hortons. Yeah. Because I just remember sitting down in the, like, ooh, like I guess, the food court. Yeah, it's called yeah. the food court. And we're just sitting down, and we're just talking about, like, all this stuff. Yep. Later find out it was part of the tryouts. <laughs> yeah, because then, I mean, it wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, purposeful. But <laughs> I went home, and I was texting Andrea, and I'm like, you know what? This Monica girl, like, she's really cool. And I want us to, like, hang out, like, with her. Like, me and you. Because I was kind of, like, presenting Monica as, like, this girl's really cool. I think we would get along as, like, a trio. And she's like, like, yeah, I like Monica. My application. (laughs) He's a candidate. And then, and then, I think eventually we, like, went on a... Group mall date. Group mall date. And then... (laughs) It was, like, really fun, and you were, like, and that was the thing of, like, me and Andrea, we wanted, we just wanted someone who vibes with us, you know? Yeah. And you were able to talk to me, and you were able to talk to Andrea separately, but also you didn't make it awkward when we were together, because it kind of, you kind of, like meshed with us yeah you combined it you were yourself with me and you were yourself with Andrea so then when you were yourself in the group it was natural and it wasn't like two different Monica's true and like I kind of like felt that like once I met like both of you and then we were actually starting to do like things outside of school I, I like felt it that like I could like be myself with you guys and that's something like I didn't feel like since like elementary school Mm -hmm. like I I never got like that close to like the other people I was like friends with and then met y'alls and then I was like we vibing I feel like I could be myself with y'alls and like even those like a trio and like you guys knew each other so well yeah I didn't feel like the third wheel which is and we didn't think of you as the third wheel either, yeah. which was very weird. Like, not not weird in a bad way, but, like, rare. No, like, I agree with you. Like, it's it, it was weird in the sense of something that you don't expect happening. Because yeah. a lot of people think if, oh, there's, like, a trio, there's always going to be two people who are, who are closer. And then the third person is going to be a third wheel. Because I feel like there's- that's the natural reaction to it or, like, the natural, like, expectation of it, I guess. Yes, yes. But then that didn't happen between the three of us. Because I think there's similarities between me and you that make us different from Andrea. Yes. <laughs> and then there's similarities between me and Andrea that make us different from you. But you're like a good counterpart. And then Andrea's a good counterpart to us. And then I'm sure like you yeah. guys also. Because I'm only speaking from my side. But oh yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I feel like we balance each other out very yeah. well. Cause where like two people agree on something for one topic, another two people will agree on like a different topic and like Yes. Or like we'll and, see like, people's perspectives or things. When like me that. and Andre are being ridiculous together, you're like the like rational mom. um mom of the group. But then when me and you are being, like, anxious about something and, like, wanting to, like, get things organized, yeah. Andrea's like, chill, you guys. Chill. You guys are being too stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, like, I find, I found, like, a lot. And then also, me and Andrea were mentioning this, but when you entered our lives, me and Andrea stopped having as many arguments with each other. <laughs> True, because there was, like, another person to, like, I guess, like, if you ever guys did get, like, like I guess, aggravated with each other, there was, like, another person to blow off steam with. 
you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's less of a burden on that one person um, to yeah. be everything to you, you know? Yeah. Cause you can split that with two people. Yeah. And like when- what I don't, what I don't get from Andrea and Andrea's personality, I like, it's a less of a burden on her to be everything that I need in a best friend. Yeah. She can just be herself and I'll take from her like all those qualities that I, that I like in her. Yeah. And that vibe with me. Yeah. And then you have so many qualities that I also need, but that she doesn't necessarily have. Yeah. What one person lacks, the other person like picks up on, I guess in a way. Yes. I feel like we're one of those like, thruples that Loki. are always on a documentary and defending how great it is and everyone in the comments is like no there's definitely jealousy oh my god I never actually thought of that and I'm just like wait a second because I was also <laughs> like isn't there jealousy but then I'm just like wait you can exactly argue that there's jealousy in this situation of our friendship and being like a thruple and I think friendship. there is I, I don't think you can say that there isn't no yeah it's not like fully but it's not an not an issue like in a way that like it's like detrimental to the relationship yeah it it'll just in there but then you work and, it out and honestly like from my perspective at least just speaking from for me when I hear that you and Andrea are hanging out without me like let's say I'm somewhere I can't make it or whatever yeah. I'm my initial thought is like oh uh I don't like that I I don't like that they're like doing shit having experiences where I'm not there I feel left out but it's just I think it's just that trigger of being left out in the past of other friendships for sure because I've also experienced the same thing so like I get where you're coming from but then when I do like step away from that initial feeling I am honestly like truly genuinely happy that you guys are friends outside of me Oh, yeah. Because that's another thing I don't, I didn't like in the past was, like, my friends were only, like, I had friends who I was friends with separately, but then they weren't friends with each other. And then that put a lot of burden on me to, like, keep the group together. Yeah. And, like, obviously show each person enough attention. Yeah. And it's just, like, it's, like, too much like pressure to like what if what if I I don't know what if something happens and like I'm mad at whoever but then you guys can't talk about me like outside of me you know what I mean like you guys talking outside of me about me is you could see it as a bad thing but I see as a good thing because you're keeping me in check oh yeah true it's more of like if we ever do talk about you, it's more like how do we help her? Exactly. But like if I say this sometimes like am I gonna is this is that is it gonna come off really bad if I say this? Mm-hmm. Or like how do I say <laughs> this in a better way? Cause I know I'm terrible at that. And then I know there's like times where like I wanna say something, I'm just like, uh, how do I say it? when like we're having like deep shit. And then I'm like, how do I say this without, you know, being offensive? Because I know I can do that. And I'm so aware. So can I, it. yeah. Yeah, so sometimes Andre is like the buffer, like, yeah, don't say that. Or maybe say it like this. Because <laughs> I feel like she's good at saying things well. Yeah, she's very good at, like, sort of trying, like, detaching her emotion from the situation. Yeah. And she knows exactly what to say what she needs to say to get her point across without like trying to convince someone to feel how she feels yeah which is what I find myself trying to do all the time is like I'm I'm yelling at you so that you feel what I feel yes and so I, I can same take thing. my <laughs> my feeling to put it in you and she's just like she's like very calm like how about you think of it this way yeah and then as the person being yelled at you're like okay understand yeah and the thing is we both do the same thing so i know exactly what you're saying (laughs) and then we will get offended at each other yeah (laughs) and we're mad at each other because we're like why are you yelling at me (laughs) 
And I'm like, I'm not yelling. I'm just speaking loud because for some reason, like when someone's not understanding you, you're like, well, what if I say it louder? Then they'll, then they'll understand. True. And plus there's like frustration built up. So you kind of, yeah. you kind of yell ish, <laughs> but then that never goes well. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but okay. So in the timeline, grade 12 is kind of where, um, Andrea's story and our story kind of collides as we said we asked Monica to be at our prom table oh right yes and Monica was like very shook that we were making it such a big deal I know she's like we've been friends for a year how am I not gonna choose you guys and we're like yeah "Uh we didn't know (laughs) no because I remember like because at the time to give people context um this is grade 11 and 12 so like i and i i majored in business so like i took a few business classes in high school and like you know how like people who stay who are kind of going for the same major kind of end up all in the same classes so like people who are doing business majors in the future and took a lot of business classes we, we like knew each other so like i was fairly close with those people Cause I literally saw them every day, multiple times a day, had multiple classes with them. So I just thought of them as like mostly school friends. And like, I hung out with like one or two or three of them, like outside, like here and there, but like majority of my time was spent with y'alls. So when like prom came around, I was like, yeah, this is obvious. Like I'm, I'm sitting with Agatha and Andrea and then whoever else in that group, I don't know. And I remember when like, y'all's like we were like in a hallway I remember it was in a hallway about this and I think I I don't remember the like I don't remember the conversation like word for word I feel like y'all remember it more than I do but it was like I I remember y'all's being like like, oh we were wondering if you're gonna sit with us at like prom oh we thought you were like sitting with like your friends from like business or um and and I don't know if you're sitting with us and I I literally like stopped I like looked at I was like perplexed and I was just like um or no like I'm a lot closer with y'all and I I assumed we were already sitting together like I think I I remember for some reason I recall you being kind of pissed off about this like that was your initial reaction was like anger I think I got defensive yeah (laughs) and I think it came from like my low-key like I had a flashback to like maybe we're not as close as I thought we were so oh, maybe that's true I can see how that could come off that way yeah I feel like that's how I took it that I was like oh what like they didn't I guess they don't think we're close enough to the fact that I would be sitting with them so I guess I took it defensively because I also have a tendency to uh get offended kind of quickly <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit i go zero to 100 real quick and then i sat back and go whoa chill girl but <laughs> our media reaction was like yes thank god we got we scored monica and you're just like what, <laughs> what like what like what what <laughs> and then yeah and i was like okay well problem solved and i even remember when because we were not really like 100 percent set on who was at our table mm-hmm. and i remember when like this just shows how much, like, I'm like, y'all's are my, my people. Because I was, I had a prom date. And I remember when I, before I accepted, I go, I can't guarantee you a seat at our table. <laughs> oh, I remember this. And he's like, yeah, that's fine if you can't. And I'll be like, okay, then sure. Yeah, because you, your prom date was friends with those business friends. Yes. So we also, that was another reason where we're like, oh, Monica's probably going to sit with them to make it easy with her date, blah, blah, blah. And then when we're like, okay, Monica's like, no. definitely sitting with us. Thank God. So now we had to like make sure that her date could also fit. And then Which was very like, Yeah, I remember like having to like draw out the seating chart and being like, okay, Andrea, Monica, me, whoever else, Monica's date next to her, obviously. So you had to be like on the edge of us so you could have the date next to you. True, because we sat, the three of us were together. Yeah. We were in the middle. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. I remember. Oh, yeah. 
prom was fun. And so over the years, I would say our friendship has definitely strengthened, but we've definitely had our uh, low ups points. And ups and yeah. downs. Um, ups and downs. It's been ups most of the time. But most you know, of the time, you have yeah. a few downs. Um, As any relationship does, so. And, and you, you know, this podcast is about being real and it's about, um, you know, talking about tough shit while you're in the midst of the tough shit. Yeah. And we're not in the midst of it anymore, I would say. But just last week, we got into, I would say, I think one of the biggest. Um, disagreements oh yeah of our friendship it got pretty rough and we got through it I think it's gonna take um time for us to like actually because like the issues that were brought up and that led to the fight were issues that we both are gonna have to work on over time it's not just like gonna be solved in like one conversation yeah, it's not like a quick fix it's like things that like we have to keep in mind and like that we have to like do constantly going forward kind of thing yeah it was just the way that the topics were brought up was kind of with heavy like emotion and not it really aggressive. it was aggressive <laughs> it was like um like talking down to the other person and this is on my end so like I'll I'll be honest like I was aggressive to Monica and telling her that she should live her life the way that I see fit yes but then also like don't be so hard on yourself because I've done the same shit to you in past arguments true like like not even a month ago, we had a similar fight, but right. it was the it flipped around. <laughs> Rolls reversed. Yeah. So we do have like similarities in that point. And I guess this is when like a similarity was kind of like a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Because we were too similar where I, because here's how I see it. And I know this is a mindset that I will have to work on myself to change. But I, and it's going to sound really shitty, but I, see myself as not always but frequently making the correct decision the as i feel most people do and i also do it so (laughs) and so when i see monica living her life i see it from a third party perspective not caught up in the emotion and i'm like i know exactly what she should do and I know exactly what like is going on I know like obviously I'm not there I'm not seeing the conversations Mm -hmm. that she's having I'm not like actually living her life but I think that I know what's right for her yeah and I feel like I'm some sort of like fortune teller psychic like I can see where she's heading and the trajectory of it but I don't like I truly I need to remind myself that I don't and that I don't know, like, the details of her situation. I just know what she tells me of it. And that can be heavily skewed, either good or bad. And she also, and this is what my therapist has told me, because I had had, um, an appointment with my therapist last week, and this was, like, a big issue at the time so I talked to her about it and she's saying like you have to remember she's going through her own life she's living her own life you can't live it for her and just like you guys had that argument a couple months ago where she was in your shoes you were in her shoes like roughly Mm -hmm. she didn't understand the situation And neither did you understand her. But now that it's flipped, you know, you had that experience and now you can speak from it. So she needs to have whatever experience she's going to have, whether it's good or bad, but she has to have it to Mm -hmm. then learn and grow and become a 
person with experience. Yeah, and it took the roles being reversed for me to realize, like, the way that I handled that, or the previous argument that we had, how, like, my mistake in it and how I handled it. And I don't think I would have realized unless, like, I felt it myself. So, like, in a way, even though it was shitty at the time and it sucked, I feel like it was necessary for us to grow as people to kind of see roles reversed. Because then we can kind of look back and be like, I see where you're coming from in that sense. Yeah. And then we also understand what we did wrong in that situation. Yeah. And then in the future, we can avoid bringing up issues in making them worse based off the tone we give it off, you know? And then also the tone that I was coming with and I, the tone that I was coming at you with was so aggressive because I was still holding a grudge from that first argument, mm-hmm. you know? And I, like, I knew. and I said this to my therapist and she's like, yeah, of course, because you were still pissed. And I'm like, yeah, because – to me, I was seeing it like, yes, this is completely roles reversed and she's being a hypocrite because now she's not acting the way that she would have acted back then or the way that she told me to act. So now I'm trying to like talk sense back into her and say like, remember, this is what you said. So this is how you should act. But you were like, well, now I realize that in the moment I'm making my own decision yeah and and i third party opinions really don't have like as big of an impact as i thought yeah and like i realized my hypocrisy at that moment i'm like oh and i understand why she's so angry and i knew part of the reason you were so i guess like emotionally charged was because of that and like i was like and i I recognize it too because clearly like yes i'm not i'm being biased Cause, Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to come from that point. I didn't want to come from that viewpoint of like, I'm mad at her and that's why I'm yelling at her. Mm -hmm. I really truly wanted it to be selfless. Like I wanted it to be that I'm concerned for you. Yeah. But I just couldn't get out of that mindset. Which I get it. Cause like, I've done the same thing to you. Where I'm just like, I I coming at her so aggressively about this because I just want her to like understand that I want what's best for her. But but then at the same time I didn't realize like, hey, like she's she ha- sometimes has to do certain things for her to grow. And hey, who, I don't know, it could actually work out fine. And I'm just concerned and like I'm just like bec- and like acting like my concerns are like what's gonna happen. Which is yeah. the same thing you do. So and that's like, the thing is like I – and I've said this to you – I said this to you at the time when we were having this first fight. And I said like I know that what you're saying to me is coming from a place of pure like love and concern for my well-being and my heart. And you don't want me to like mm-hmm. come out of it heartbroken again. Um. But I was saying, and I was trying to convince you, like, I just need to do it. Like, I know that coming from your perspective, you want to protect me. You want to, like, you don't want me to be hurt. But from my perspective, like, going through this experience is worth whatever heartache I have in the end. Yeah. And that's not something, like, I really, like, understood unless I was faced with, like, a similar situation I don't blame you because you don't want the people that you love to go through Mm -hmm. anything bad and you would rather them not have the good experience if you can avoid the bad yeah like I I don't know why but I was like I rather like I hate seeing the people like I care about in pain I rather me take that pain instead of them me too and I know that's like not how life works and you can't even I don't want to sound like, like, I don't know, some kind of like savior complex, but like me going through like that shitty breakup and everything that happened, 
mm-hmm. I was like, I'm so glad that it was me. Like I've had this thought multiple times, but no, I, I said this so much. I'm like, I'm so glad this was me and not Monica or Andrea. No, I get it because I when you were going through your shit, there's part of me that's like, I wish it was me, not you. Yo, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm like, I feel it too, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> no no like I get it it's like you care so much about like certain people that like you don't know you want them to be happy 24 7 and any burdens that they have you rather carry them because like they're like I want that person to be happy and I'm willing to sacrifice that for myself and like I get it because I I I do it all the time and that's like I say like I'm a ride or die because I really rather because I really rather do that for my friends, and I and I see that you do the same thing. Definitely, like, and that's where, like, yeah. that's why I, when we do get in arguments, they can get super heated because we're coming from the same place and we're doing the same thing, but then we're exactly, reacting because I, I don't, I don't give a shit, honestly. Like, if my heart gets broken, like, I'm just like, fine, whatever, it'll happen. Yeah, but if it's you, I'm like, hell no, no. do it. <laughs> Which, like, I get it, because, like, I, it's the same shit, and, like, I feel like the recent arguments we've had, and I feel like also based off, like, our age and us, like, honestly growing right now, that we're realizing that that's maybe not the best way to approach something. No. And, like, my therapist said this, too, she's like, you had to go through what you went through to have the wisdom that you have now. And Mm -hmm. would, would you like take it back? And I'm like, no. So she's like, you have to like, look at that from Monica's perspective as well. Like no matter what, it's an experience and you can't like deny that from her if she wants to take that choice yeah, to make that choice. And it's like, Something that I think we're both realizing right now. Because listen, like, even if you were a psychic and two and a half years ago you told me, don't date this guy, which you did. You did tell me that. Don't date this guy because he's going to cheat on you and he's going to break your heart. Yeah. Even if you and told was- me that with absolute certainty, <laughs> would I still have done it? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Probably you would have done it. Cause like, and I don't regret it. I don't regret having dated him. Like, I grew no. so much. I had so many positive experiences. I regret... I don't think I regret anything, honestly. And then you shouldn't. Because even though, like, there was heartbreak involved, you also had amazing moments. And also, I have the wisdom that I have now of everything yeah. like not even yeah. not even from just the bad experiences I have wisdom from like learning who I am in a relationship like that and yeah. learning like just experiencing all those good moments as well like I wouldn't take that away for the bad ending yeah because like you did learn a lot about yourself and I feel like you're also learning about yourself now a lot post yeah and like you're rediscovering yourself. And I think and I keep going back and forth because there's like many parts of me at once who have different opinions. Um there's parts of me who are very protective of you and I just want you to find yeah. like a perfect relationship which is impossible. But I just want you to be with a a perfect man who is perfect for you and you are perfect for him and everything's just like happy forever. And then I know that I might, if you did listen to me, which is like, I don't have that much say in your life and I have to come to terms with that. But if you did listen to me and then you had like thrown away something that could be good and could be that for you. And it was like, because I had some kind of like weird, premonition or something I don't know yeah and it's like something that like I realized like now it's like back in the day when I did express my concerns um I could have done a lot better but like 
I know now how to dress a lot better now. And like in the future, if I do get like bad juju or whatever, like I know at the end of the day you're gonna make the decision that's that but you I want feel you to still and... tell me. Like that's yeah, the obviously. Thing. I want to hear like, it. I will still tell you, but yes. I'm not gonna be like oh, That's what I always you... appreciated about you is that you were always honest with how you were feeling with whoever I was dating. You were always yeah. honest with me, like, oh, I don't really like him, but you're going to do what you want to do. Yeah. And I did appreciate that, even though it did make things difficult, because I wanted, maybe because, maybe the difference is, you don't say it in front of him. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, had, then, I have told him in this case. Yeah, because then it makes, like, the hangouts awkward. Yep, I will not do that. <laughs> and I, I won't do that. I'll make sure not to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you like one on one if I have bad juju in the future with yeah. anyone that you're dating. And I'll do it in a way where I'm recognizing that my opinion doesn't have that much weight. But hopefully it, it has good to know a little bit of weight. it's like good to know so it's so it's like maybe like if something does end up going like really bad and then you're like oh i was i was ta- they like mentioned this so it's like maybe they yes. have some truth and then you start realizing yourself yeah so it's kind of just like to have it like in there like here are the cautions and just so so you're not you don't go in completely unprepared and unaware exactly yeah because that's, I think that's the thing is we have to reframe our intentions mm-hmm. with how we're saying these things. Like, yeah. I need to start intending to just bring awareness to you instead of trying to convince you. Yes, I think that that is a thing. Because, like, I I recognize that I was trying to convince, not necessarily Me too. bring awareness. Yeah. I was like, I was like, Monica, how can you not see this? I know, right? <laughs> so it's like, um, I feel like it also comes from like that we we like to be right. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yes. a little bit of our egos. <laughs> and this is like what Andrea said about me. I think in the last episode I had with her, where she's like, "This is your older sibling energy." I just I have to be. I have to be right. I have to win all the time. Is it what's like only child energy? I think it's similar because you haven't. You didn't have an older sibling to tell you things. Like no, you didn't have someone older being like, "This is the right way." Unless it was my parents, but like that's no one. So that's like any parents. <laughs> yeah. Because Andrea's the youngest of three, so she had all her siblings tell her this is the right way, and she just goes, okay. (laughs) True. I guess it's like, I didn't have, like, I guess an older sibling to tell me that this is the right way. And I've always been the one telling people. (laughs) This is the right way. (laughs) Yeah. So then I guess, I guess it kind of like, if you look like you're like, oh, this is the right way, and I'm like... Who gave you the authority to tell me that this is yep. my way? <laughs> no one's done that in my life. Exactly. And then, and then we clash. You want it, and then you do the same thing. Mm-hmm. No one no one gives you the authority to tell me that's the right way. And then we clash. Oh. <laughs> but I feel like we grew a lot in the fact that we recognize that. Yeah. Like, a lot more now. And I think definitely that kind of speaks to our friendship Mm -hmm. and us being like on the same page with things is like if for example if I had um well you were the one that reached out after the fight I yeah because I had the whole day to process everything and I was gonna reach out to honestly that that day because it was after I had therapy and I talked about it and and then I realized like I shouldn't be mad like, I had decided that I was going to say something to you, and then you had uh, texted, like, your long response. Ass paragraph, yeah. Your long-ass paragraph. Yeah, because, like, I've noticed, for me, it's, like, in the moment, especially when I'm heated, I'm, 
like I'm already like not the best communicator. So like in the moment when I'm heating and I have emotions, like I guess driving what I'm saying, I don't get out what like I need to get out. So basically having the whole like night in the day to just think about everything. And then so like I figured out like what I want to say. I like acknowledged a lot of the things you guys said. Yeah, like which and that was very that I was validating in the conversation before that because I was so heated and I know y'all didn't feel like I was even accepting what you were saying. Yeah. So basically, I just had like a whole paragraph addressing like a bunch of like the issues, <laughs> I guess, and I, like I spaced them out for each issue. Like each issue had their own paragraph. It was a whole essay. <laughs> yeah. So like just expressing everything. And then you came back with your giant ass essay as well. Yep. And then we kind of like, because like, Andrea was working, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she was really busy. So she didn't address it just yet. And we kind of worked out our thing, mostly. Yeah. And then Andrea's like, just give me like a second and I'll, I'll reply. Like, I'm not ignoring you. And then she came out with her essay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of just like we just worked it out in that terms and we realized the things that we all like need to work on when it comes to addressing issues and this is like something that we're gonna just have to keep doing you know yeah and I think I mean this goes back to just like us being all on the same page with like as long as we still want to be here as long as we still like want to have this friendship yeah then we're willing to put in the work yeah because it's not just like gonna happen out of nowhere like with no effort it it requires work to like and not only work on the friendship but work on yourself so you can always like show up and be the best version of yourself Mm-hmm. for, for mm-hmm. The, those other people I don't know if y'all felt this but like I guess this like stems from like I guess my past like relationships if I like when fights like this broke out I was like this over friendship over but even though we had the argument I was like okay we're we're gonna still be friends after this yeah I know that for a fact <laughs> so might as well let's <laughs> Let me think about all this stuff and not be wasting my time being angry for, like, a week or whatever. And I'll be like, I'm going to address this now and we'll deal with it. And then that's... So I was never, like, concerned about that. I mean, this is, like, on the other... On the flip side, you know, I wouldn't have said all the aggressive shit that I said to you during the fight if I didn't think that we would still be okay after. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have taken it that far. Yeah, if, it just shows that like we all really care about each other. Because some... I, th- in the moment, I was like, "This is worth the uncomfortableness mm-hmm. of fighting to get yeah. my point across." Because I want to protect her, and I and I feel like this is like important enough to address, even if it's going to be a fight. Yeah. Otherwise, like if I just wanted to keep you as like a surface level friend. I you wouldn't even bother involved. bringing it up. Yeah, you wouldn't get involved at all. No. Like, really care. Like, you'd be like, hey, whatever. I don't care. And I'll cut this out, but, like, I have friends who are in dating situations that I would not approve of. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not dipping my toes in that at all. No. I'm like, like bye. Oh, no, no. Have your relationship. Have fun. It's not your place. It's not my place, and I want to preserve the, like, friendship as it is. I don't want to cause that rift. Yeah. But I knew that our friendship was strong enough that it wouldn't cause a rift. It would just yeah cause an opportunity okay. to grow, actually. Because yeah. being I think being honest, if it's a relationship slash friendship, any sort of relationship that you see going the, potentially the rest of your life, Mm-hmm. not bringing up a core issue that you're having with it is just gonna like what why not bring it up if you're gonna live in this uncomfortable 
situation, biting your tongue. Because I don't think that's sustainable. Because no. if you bite your tongue for so long, you're going to blow the hell up. Exactly. And it could actually end something. Yep. That's why you just got to, like, be honest, but do it differently than the way that yeah, I did it. We, weren't, we didn't do it the best way. <laughs> no. But I feel like that's what's great about our friendship is that we are growing together and like we've seen it a lot especially since like I guess like uni in the past like few years I think and like us like doing this whole like early 20s like we're all growing turning into mush the whole thing and like yep. coming out as butterflies and things yep. we're gonna actually go through that process together and like we're going to get on each other's nerves <laughs> it's yeah. going to happen <laughs> Uh, we're all doing our own shit but thing is we're helping each other get through this shit we've all like shown like more like maturity and it's like we understand that we aren't perfect and we all have opportunities to like be better and it would be it would be frustrating to be in a friendship with somebody and there are people out there like this like we've all known had people. dealt with them people who just don't aren't able to like see their own fault in things and then also because they can't see their own fault they can't empathize with you or see your yeah. faults and then speak with you in a compassionate way which is just frustrating because then you just end up going in circles exactly and that's what I like about our friendship is like we'll have a fight but then we'll talk it out because we always just want to resolve it we yeah. don't want to just gloss over it, and we also don't want to just avoid it. True. Because we know it's, like, it's not gonna, like, it's gonna be, if we do that, if we just, like, push it under, like, the rug, you know? Yeah. It just, it's always constantly gonna be there, and it's just And we also aren't the type build. to keep fighting about it. No. Because we, because we all hate fighting. I feel like we yeah. know that, like... <laughs> We don't like to argue. We like it, I get emotionally distraught when I argue with the people I yep. care about because they're like I don't like it. <laughs> it like keeps me up. Like like I'm like in bed and I'm like oh, sweating and I'm shaking, and then I can't sleep. Yeah, and I like start sometimes crying. <laughs> I was crying when I get really upset. I'm just Same. like I'm like I don't like this. I just want us to be like friends and like and like and like be happy again. So therefore, you it's like needed to resolve that. You need to like a moment of like uncomfortable to like resolve it. Talk about your feelings, and then so you can literally just like be like, okay, let's now move on and grow. Yeah, like you after that fight that we had in person, like a couple months ago, where you were like aggressively telling me what I should do after that like we had a cry about it and then we ate chocolate cake and we just like hugged and it was great yeah and like yes there were like grudges that I that I held um after that but it wasn't like intentional I wasn't like trying to be angry at you it was just like something that was unresolved in the back of my head but it yeah. wasn't it wasn't something that we could have solved either. Like, you had True. to go through that experience to be able to empathize with me in that moment. Yeah. And just, like, this fight that we had, I'm sure it's not, like, fully resolved, but we're going to work through it over time. Yeah. We're going to, like... It's not going to be, like, an overnight, like, quick fix, it's done, blah, blah, blah. No, exactly. It's, like, full, like, character growth that we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. But thing is, in the meantime, we're not going to be awkward with each other. No. And like we're going to, we're going to like, obviously it takes effort to have this growth and it's shown through multiple little things over time. Yeah. So now it's just like, we have to go through these little things. Like, mm -hmm. step by step. Yeah, and I feel like it's all going to be worth it in the end because I do look at you guys as like people I'm going to have until I'm in the ground. I I see myself as basically married with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a throuple. Better get drunk in my funeral. If I die first, y'all have to get drunk. That's my Oh, we're gonna we're gonna do some karaoke. 
Oh, yes. And I hope you do some karaoke at my funeral if I die first. Okay. Even if you're in a wheelchair. Oh, my God. You got to go hard on that total eclipse of the heart. Don't worry. I do total eclipse of the heart just for you. (laughs) So, with that, um, I think that's a good ending to our lives and therefore to this podcast episode. Oh, yeah. I think it's good. Um, Thanks for joining me, Monica. Thanks for having me again. No problem. This is actually kind of fun. Like, I always feel like I got like I've resolved some stuff or discovered something new about myself. I also feel like I had a lot of stuff resolved from last week because I haven't seen your face. I know since we had this fight. It was an over text fight, but I hate. (sighs) You're so bad. But yeah, so I'm so glad I could see your face and we like cried during this episode like yeah that was that was a lot uh <laughs> but the thing is, it also, was fun also I feel like I've also like learned more about like myself I guess or like discovered some new feelings good feelings let's get this straight good feelings I'm not happy yet <laughs> don't worry <laughs> no like good feelings I'm happy this is great we're doing Gucci <laughs> <laughs> okay thank god um <laughs> Monica has plans to get to on this wonderful Friday evening. And um, what's left of it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty late, but uh won't keep you any longer. We've already been talking for two hours. I think um, it was great two hours. I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you. I also enjoyed it. And you'll be back again, probably, most likely. I wanna say real quick, please follow the mushroom pod Instagram at the mushroom pod uh for updates on episodes and stuff please subscribe and rate the podcast on whatever platform you're using to listen to it right now um you can also find uh episodes on youtube i'm like slowly uploading all of them and then you can uh watch them with subtitles if you're into subtitles also if you want to leave a an anonymous message which you want me to read or play you can submit it as a text form in the google form link which is in the description or you can submit it as an audio message with the anchor link that's in the description i'll see you in the next episode of the mushroom have a good week slash two weeks but i'll see you next time (laughs) bye bye bye